Hello everybody, my name is Amanda Pooley and I am Deputy Editor at PB and thank you so much for joining our webinar today. Um, so today we're going to be talking about a really interesting topic and um, that's very topical at the moment. Um, we're going to be talking about health and safety standards to adhere to as a mobile now tech during the coronavirus pandemic. So today I'm joined by celebrity manicurist and founder of Revarnish London, Roxanne Campbell, and she's basically going to be giving us a lowdown on the health and standards health and safety standards mobile now techs need to be meeting when working during the pandemic and sharing her top tips for making every client appointment as COVID-19 secure as possible. Now we're going to be doing a bit of an interview but there will be time at the end for any questions that you have so if you do have a question for Roxanne just post it in the comment box and we will do our best to get as many of them answered at the end as possible. Um, but thank you so much Roxanne for joining, I really appreciate it. How are you doing today? Good, thank you. Thank you for having me. No, that's no worries. So yeah, like as I said, I don't know if you want to just introduce yourself to everybody a little bit at first, tell them a bit about yourself just before we kind of get stuck into the, the topic of this webinar. Yeah, sure. So um, my name is Roxanne Campbell and I'm a celebrity manicurist and I have been working in the nail industry for over 15 years now. And um, I used to work in nail salons and then I kind of fell into the session world. So I do a lot of session work and editorials and magazines and I also work with a lot of celebrities. So um, Alicia Keys and um, oh, Adele wow. and Jordan Dunn and quite a few other celebrities. So yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, that's, that's such a, a great um, black book of A-list celebrities you're working with. Um, mm -hmm. So obviously, you know, just before we get started, how have things been since you started seeing clients following COVID-19 lockdown? And, you know, just how is business doing? Do you know what? The truth is, I have never been so busy in my whole career. I cannot <laughs> believe how busy I have been in session work and in the mobile business. So for Revarnish London, we are fully booked almost every day. So I have three women on my team and we travel all over London. And since we've launched, it has grown rapidly. And a lot of our clients come from word of mouth. So it's mm. actually amazing to see how much people, how much clients we have. It's doing really, really good. That's yeah. um, amazing to hear. I think, you know, one thing that's definitely true about the beauty industry is that we have very loyal clients and, you know, people, they want to see their nail tech, they want to see their facialist. And I think that isn't going to go away. But I guess, you know, have you noticed any change in the types of treatments that clients are coming to you post lockdown as opposed to before? Or, you know, are you noticing any trends of what people want? Yes. So in terms of treatment, a lot of people are having the luxury manicure and pedicure. Mm. Now, usually whenever we had offered the service, it was always someone that would do it for like maybe their birthday or a treat or Valentine's Day, Mother's Day. Mm. But I think because like when I do speak to some of the clients, they do say things like because we've been on lockdown, we've been bored or some people have been a bit <laughs> depressed they just really want to pamper themselves so I think everyone's just going out and they're all going for the luxury and we also do um an add-on service aromatherapy hand and foot massage so some people would have like a gel manicure and then they would mm. add on the aromatherapy so yeah really luxury treatments people's been having that's really interesting I wonder if that's because people have kind of missed that that element of touch like the power of touch and I guess being stuck in lockdown they want to treat themselves and want to have more of an indulgent experience when they come in um, to see you exactly yeah that's what it is <laughs> and obviously like adhering to the government's COVID-19 protocols is absolutely critical for mobile nail techs at the moment to be able to operate safely and successfully what are the like key health and safety standards that they need to be making sure that they're meeting when they're seeing clients during the pandemic well one thing that I always say is as a qualified nail technician, um, a lot of the protocol is basically what we would have, have been doing already for our whole career. Um, of course, we have to take it really serious at this present time. But um, what we have to do is, so for example, we wear like the mask and the vase, and then when we go to our clients' houses, as soon as we arrive, we wash our hands straight away, we sanitize our hands, and then we um, sanitize the table. And everything we use is highly sterilized and clean, and it's really, really important. And you just definitely want to make sure that you protect yourself and your client, especially being mobile. And if you are as busy as we are going from house to house, you just want to make sure you protect yourself and you just make sure that your client's safe and you're safe. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess as well, like, it's as much about 
the health and safety standards that you're meeting as much as making sure that when you see clients, like, are you getting them to wash their hands before they have the treatment with you and like yeah. things like that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> we wash our, I wash my hands, they wash their hands. And then even when we sit down, I'm a bit OCD. <laughs> we'll then sanitize our hands again. Like we literally, yeah, just mm. super, super clean. <laughs> and obviously how does it work for mobile now techs as well because i guess if you work in a salon or a spa once you finish the treatment they've got like a set turnaround time that they have to sterilize everything and clean everything before the next client comes in obviously once you've done a treatment are you sterilizing all your tools at the client's house or in your place or well, are you doing it like in between like how are you working that out well, we have an autoclave machine, so everything is sterilized and self-sealed. So when we go out to do jobs, we have loads of tools on us already that's already been sanitized. So once we do the treatment um, and we, um, once we've used the tools and we pack them away, we've got extra clean ones already. So mm. we don't clean them until we get back. Yeah. So I guess like a key thing is making sure that you have enough spares on you and enough exactly. other things that you can use. And I guess that must be the same with PPE because I mean, on an average day, like how many clients are you seeing and how much PPE are you going through? A lot. And on average, clients will see maybe I'd say on a busy day, I'll say like five a day. So mm. it's, it's a lot of clients, but um, even the disposable foot files that we use, we throw them away after every use. And the pedi liners, we use the disposable pedi liners. So we throw them away after every client. So everything is constantly been thrown away, sanitized and super clean. Have you found that since um, you've been able to start working since lockdown that you've had to really move to a lot more kind of disposable stuff? And also, is the disposable stuff that you're using, like, is it environmentally friendly? Like, have you been able to find solutions that are like that? Or is that quite tricky? It is quite tricky in terms of them being environmental friendly because some of them are like plastic and it's like mm. paper. And stuff. So it is really hard. But then at the same time, um, we're doing our best to be as hygienic as possible. Now, the truth is the methods that we're using is something that I've used throughout my whole career. So um, years ago, I used to work in um, Selfridges at, for OPI, and that is also how OPI worked. So I've always been used to this. Mm. So when I do meet some clients and stuff that say, oh, is, are you working like this because of the COVID and stuff? And it's like, this is how I've always worked throughout my whole career. So this isn't anything new to me. Yeah, I think that's like a really common theme that's come across in lockdown is that actually maybe... And the government and consumers in general aren't aware of like how high the health and safety standards are in beauty anyway yeah. Um, because yeah so many people obviously have said like so much of what the government's recommending recommending they're already doing um, yeah. but I mean are there any kind of common mistakes that you see techs do when trying to follow these rules or do you have like any top tips that can help make following these protocols a little bit easier um, well, to be honest with you, like um, on Instagram, like when I see other nail techs and stuff, there hasn't been anyone that I've seen not following the protocol properly. So from the videos mm. and the pictures that I've seen, people seem to be doing the correct thing. Um, but for those that don't know what to do or how to incorporate this into their services, my advice would be to like have a step by step, like a list of all the mm. procedures to follow before you get to somebody's house. And um, the more you do it, it will just come naturally. But I think if you were to maybe write everything down from maybe one to mm. 10 and read it and then you get used to it and then you'll follow the, then you'll start to do it naturally. Yeah, that's a really good idea. I mean, is there kind of like a little kind of mental checklist you go through before you go into like a client's house of what you're doing? And are you able to kind of share that with us? Um, yeah, well, the thing is, I, well, yeah, my, my protocol is kind of in my head because I've yeah. done it for so long. So I, actually don't, I actually don't have anything like written down or anything mm. to say. But I, I would say that um, before I go to a client's um, home to do their nails, um, because I do like to work with my team as well, um, I would let them know what the procedure is going to be. And even when I arrive, I tell them what I'm going to be doing, how I'm going to be working. And then the client feels a lot more comfortable once you do that, because I've kind of just given them the heads up and then showing yeah. them, explaining how we do things. So yeah, that helps a lot. Mm. And obviously, you know, people are always asking us these kind of questions, but are there any tools or cleaning products that you would particularly recommend for now techs to invest in to help sterilize their tools? Like what kind of what are you using at the moment that you think is really effective? Well, actually, I've actually got the product right in front of me. <laughs> Handy. Is, that one, the Mundo oh, yeah. product. I use this. This is my favorite. I've used it for so many years. And I use the hand sanitizer spray and foot spray. I've used them for the... They've got ones for nail files as well. They've got wipes. Literally 
everything that they've got that's what we use for our cleaning mm. um, products yeah and obviously part of making your appointment as covid secure as you can is really about putting the client's mind at ease um especially with the r right kind of raise like rising again and people getting a little bit nervous about a potential second wave i mean how do you go about making your clients feel comfortable having a treatment with you um to be honest with you it's just reassuring them um and telling them about our standards of how clean we are how professional we are all the all the steps that we follow and making them feel comfortable and um, to be fair a lot of the clients we have has been through word of mouth so mm -hmm. they kind of know how we work already and a lot of the times that's why they want to book us and this is also the benefit to being mobile because um some women do say oh i don't really want to go to a salon and sit with other people where i can be at home and just have like one therapist or nail tech mm -hmm. i say do my nails so that has been the benefit really i think they just they automatically feel comfortable when it's just one person coming into their home is yeah what so yeah that is really interesting actually i guess that um maybe more people will be looking for mobile nail techs because they feel more comfortable in their own home than having to travel to a salon so i guess this is a time where mobile nail techs could really try and advertise themselves more and maybe potentially get some new clients because you know everybody feels differently about coronavirus don't they and how they feel about going out so i guess it's just kind of tapping into that um exactly. yeah because also one thing i was going to ask you about is like what kind of language do you use with clients um when they've got questions about how safe their appointment will be or anything like that like is there particular ways that you approach people about it and how can clients find out all the information about kind of all the safety protocols that you put in place and um, well if they were to ask any questions i would answer them for them and just list it and whether it's on the phone some women do call and answer over the phone and then i'll tell them the main question that women have asked is if any of the um manicurists wear a mask and stuff which is just normal to us so yeah, yeah yeah and then also for anyone that wants more information on our website on the rewindish london website um it has a page that basically talks all about what we do and the steps that we follow so mm. um yeah the information's there if they need it and we're also really helpful so we answer as much questions as people need to know really yeah i think that's key isn't it because i think um there's so much confusion i think about right protocols when you're out and stuff like that and obviously the government's always changing it's um, rules about restrictions and things like that. So I guess it can't hurt for mobile now techs to post out every once in a while on social media about what their protocols are and things like that and just kind of get that message across. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, and I just really feel like in general, like mobile business, I think I feel like this is the future. Mm. Really. I mean, do you have like um, an email you send out to your client database and like things like that? Like how do you kind of get your messaging across to people? Um, yeah, so through newsletters, we get them. Yeah, them. yeah that, that's the main thing. Or just when we see them in person as well, to be fair. Yeah. And obviously, we were talking a little bit um, just before this webinar started, um, because this is a question we get a lot. And um, I wanted to pose to Roxanne is obviously, client no shows were a bit of an issue for the industry anyway, before, <laughs> before the coronavirus yeah. pandemic. But obviously, now, um, it's an issue because if somebody's got a bit of a sore throat, which could be a symptom of COVID, um, they're obviously a little bit more worried about coming in. They might cancel within 24 hours, which is obviously a safe thing to do, but they could just have a sore throat. I mean, what's your kind of policy on client no-shows at the moment and just how are you dealing with this situation? Well, the way that we work, um, if someone is having any type of symptoms, and I know it could possibly just be a flu or just a cold, but we would actually cancel their appointment. We wouldn't actually continue. We wouldn't actually go and do the treatment. We would reschedule the client for another time when they're feeling better, and then we'll also get them to do a test. So some, to be fair, we've only had like one person who said that they thought that they've got symptoms and they were calling to cancel and mm. they got tested and basically they didn't have anything. It was just the flu. But um, that's a perfect example. It's good that she actually contacted us and told us. Um, but yeah, if someone does have any symptoms, we don't actually, we don't, we don't actually go to the home to do the treatment. We reschedule. Yeah. And obviously, I mean, like you said they went and they had a test and you've rescheduled them in but i guess this is going to be a bit more of the norm in the future isn't it so i mean should mobile now text kind of put something about this policy they have on their website and things like this because i guess clients won't necessarily 
be a hundred percent sure what the right thing is to do yeah no exactly definitely i think definitely to have it on the website and just have like a policy um if this happens because i think because we are getting closer to winter now and it's going to get colder people are going to actually just have a cold it might not necessarily be um the covid so yeah it can get a bit um you don't want like too many no shows because of it but i think yeah it's just it's definitely better to be um safe than sorry and to just ask questions like if a client was to say how they're feeling just yeah just basically ask questions yeah and just out of um curiosity like kind of how many clients are you sort of seeing a day at the moment so on average it is between i'd say average three to five yeah and is that kind of i know you said that you sort of launched your business kind of at the start of all of this so has that been quite steady across or are you seeing more of a demand to see people but at the moment you just kind of can't really fit it in with all the PPE and the cleaning and obviously all the COVID. Yeah well to be honest with you a lot of the clients that we've got they book straight away so even the ones that have never um, used our services before once they have it that's it and then they just keep on booking it so mm. it's been growing that way and it's literally just all been through word of mouth so um even like advertising and stuff we haven't even advertised yet and it's growing mm. rapidly so that's why I just see so much potential in it and yeah, yeah anything with mobile that's really interesting because also you mentioned as well about clients are booking more luxury treatments um, than before are you also finding that clients are booking more appointments back to back or that as soon as they've had their appointment with you they're booking their next one straight away yes yes because once they experience it and then they see how we work they want to book another one another interesting thing that i would like to say is um we actually do men as well and mm. also this is the most that we that I have ever done male pedicures and manicures in my whole 15 Interesting. years. Yeah. And when I asked have... them, yeah, I said to them, like, how come like now? And mm. like some of the men say things like, well, to be honest with you, because I'm not in a salon with loads of other women, they feel a bit uncomfortable. Whereas if they're at home, they feel more comfortable. Now we don't just like do men like on their own. It might just be like a couple, like a, a mm. husband and then they get their nails in together but yeah there's been a big increase on men for men having manicures and pedicures for sure that's really interesting i guess that's another client base that um, mobile techs can really think about maybe targeting at the moment because you wouldn't necessarily think of that but if they feel more comfortable in their own environment having a pedicure and their partner's having it rather than going into a salon um it's just another way of kind of building a client base that you wouldn't necessarily have before exactly and that's exactly what's been happening and even like the, the male clients have been spreading the word to that their male friends so it's funny so like now we do like two like the husband and the wife <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i guess it's like it's that word of mouth that's going to keep client retention for you and keep building your business especially with these kind of uncertain months that we have coming up um with coronavirus and winter because obviously nobody really knows how this is going to play out at the moment so would you say that you feel quite positive about the future then and you think your business is going to do okay through winter? Um, yeah, I am positive. I think maybe this year is going to be a tough year, but I think mm. by next year, hopefully, the new norm should get better. But I think in general, um, everything is going to change. So it's just about adapting to everything and thinking of the future and thinking ahead. And this is why I came up with this solution of doing Revarnish London, because whilst I was in lockdown I was thinking everything's going to change so mm. what can I do differently because I've always wanted to I've had a salon before but I used to want to franchise and stuff and I'm not saying I would never right. do it but just right now I just don't feel like it's the thing to do I think mobile is the way forward mm. and you know have you done anything to kind of potentially future proof your business against a second wave if it does come or do you have any tips for anybody about how they could potentially um, be prepared for that because I guess it's quite a scary thing to think that potentially there could be another lockdown and that will obviously be quite detrimental for a lot of beauty businesses yeah well do you know what the thing is I think 
depends on on what the lockdown is going to be like if it's going to be the way it was mm. if we are on complete lockdown then we won't be able to work so my advice to those who are busy or do have a mobile business is to just save your money and to just be prepared and then once um the lockdown is over and then you can start working again and then you can build it up and that's the mindset that i have that if we have to stop mm. working we'll stop working completely and then we'll go again when when we're allowed to basically yeah because I guess um especially with your kind of work as well like you work with a lot of celebrities and things like that and that requires a lot of travel and being able to move around freely I mean have you ever thought about because obviously in lockdown so many digital things were happening especially like digital workshops and things like that is that ever an avenue that you would think about going down potentially is kind of hosting workshops or nail techs or anything like that Yes, 100%. I'm definitely going to be, I'm going to actually be doing some in October, actually doing some webinars. But yeah, mine's is going to be, instead of um, like practical work and step by steps on how to do nails, mine's is going to be more of like business topics and talking about like how to become a mobile nail tech, how to break into the fashion world, like all those type Mm -hmm. of things. Um, Mine's is going to be, yeah, more business stuff, I'd say. Yeah. And obviously you said earlier as well that you feel like mobile beauty is kind of going to be in the future. Um, and obviously the COVID pandemic's having a bit of a knock-on effect and you're seeing more people wanting to have a mobile treatment in their home rather than coming to the salon. I mean, how do you see this kind of developing over the next year or so? Do you think it is going to become more of the norm and that, um, you know, mobile nail techs are going to have to, I guess, in essence, maybe think a little bit smarter about how many clients they see a day and in what areas. Because obviously I think one of the big issues when you're mobile as well is trying to get from one area to another, isn't it? Um, Trying to plan out your route. Yes. So I think um, what I would say to that is... um, well, with, the thing is, we all drive. So driving helps because you can just literally drive all over London. But mm-hmm. um, I would say that I, I definitely just believe that it is just going to continue to grow. Like, literally, it's going to... I know that there will... Be, of course, there's going to still be salons and stuff. But, like, in the future, like, years, I'm like 15 years, 20 years from now, I really feel like there's not going to be as much shops on the high street. There's, there's places that are closing down already. Some of them might reopen. Everything is online. Everything is being delivered to people. So I know the matrix is a bit it, that is extreme for now, but I do feel like everything's just going to be online, computer, things being delivered. So I'm just, I just had to rebrand and replan my whole future and career and plans of what to do because I can see what's happening and I just think that's going to be the way. Yeah, I guess it's just about being more agile, isn't it? And kind of adapting to the situation. I mean, Absolutely. you're kind of predominantly London based, but would you ever think about going wider afield if the kind of demand was there and if you did like how would you juggle that between kind of your London clients and your further afield clients because there's so many mobile now techs that have clients that are kind of in their surrounding area that they'll see but then obviously they have some loyal ones who've maybe moved further afield and you have to take into account obviously that that distance the travel costs xyz so is it about kind of I guess adjusting your treatment prices or you know how do you adapt to that yeah so basically what we do is we do mainly focus on all areas all around London and we also do treatments outside of London as well and what we do is depending on their postcode or how far away they live we would then um add a fee a fee for like the travel and the time now I've got a client that I've been doing since I was like 18 years old and she's moved to Leicester and it takes me like two hours. And wow. that sounds crazy. Some people are like, no, you've got to say bye, let that client go. Mm. But no, I still do her nails. So I've got a client who's 70 years old. Bless her. <laughs> I drive all the way to her house still to do her nails. Oh, she wow. cannot travel that far. But I know for some people it sounds a bit much. But um, I'm happy to do that because, um, I'm, yeah, I just work. Thing, I just work. Basically, it takes up my whole day a lot of the time. So once I plan in advance, it's fine. But, yeah, to go out of London it does cost a lot a lot more because it's got to be worth our time of course mm. but a lot of clients are happy for that because some of them say out of London they won't get the same quality in service for the nails so that's why we will go out ever. yeah I think it's hard to let a client go isn't it <laughs> um, yeah. you're attached to them and yeah and I think you know I, I travel so far from my hairdresser she used to be around the corner for me but I just like her so much that I'll still do the kind of journey to see her but I guess as well like with costs it's just interesting like have you increased your prices at all this year to coincide with the fact that obviously you're having to buy PPE 
and obviously more cleaning equipment and stuff like that or are you thinking about doing a price increase at all um, well, at the moment, we are doing a 20% off promotion until the end of the year. And the reason why um, I lowered the price instead of increasing it is because I knew that there are a lot of people that might have lost their jobs or they mm. can't really afford it at the moment. So I thought doing a discount was a really good idea. And um, I think it's I think it's just quite fair. Later on, we will increase the prices because at the moment, our services are high quality at affordable prices. So yes, mm. later on, we will increase them. But for now, we've we've lowered them. So do you think that you've sort of you've done the discount because obviously this is a perfect time to kind of get new clients and establish relationships and actually financially you'll kind of get the rewards for it a little bit further down the line because obviously for some businesses I think they're a little bit worried about discounting at the moment just because of I guess it's slightly different for mobile now text because you don't necessarily have the overheads of like rent and things like that. Um, but for any nail techs who kind of work in the salon, I think they're, they're just a little bit nervous sometimes about discounting at the moment. And you know, what? it's a good point you made because the whole discounting thing is a very, very um, a tricky thing because yeah. depending on your target audience, if you do have your prices quite low, when mm -hmm. you do want to increase it, they don't really want to pay. I mean, you're kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. So this is something that um, the nail tech or manicurists have to figure out for themselves, like who their target audience is. And, yeah. and work it out that way because otherwise yeah you kind of you want to make sure you're attracting the right people yeah and I guess as well like you said your clients you have luxury treatments and I guess it's aimed at a certain type of clientele who you know would pay regularly for that kind of thing so um I guess it's kind of that like you know that they will come back and they will pay those prices um because they have before but yeah I guess it is just it's, it's a very individual thing isn't it there's so many topics at the moment about whether to discount or not um and it's, it's just a very very tricky scenario to work out what is best and for how long to run a discount as well is exactly. another question okay because i mean how did you decide that you were going to run yours for how long because it's to the end of the year you said yeah, well, the reason why I said until the end of the year is because I don't feel like things are going to go back to the new norm until the end of the year. So that's why right. I kind of said that, because I feel like everything is going to be up and down with this whole lockdown thing. So I thought, you know, mm -hmm. the end of the year, because that's how long I actually think this is going to be going on for, hopefully, not till next year as well. But yeah, that's why I did like that. Yeah, it's really interesting, isn't it? I think you've just got to look at your own business and work out what you think is going to be effective to keep clients coming to you and keep that revenue coming in um, but it could be potentially a very exciting time for mobile beauty businesses um, and you've said so much about you know especially about the male clients and actually seeing more people at home and people booking in for more luxury treatments that's all real kind of food for thought at the moment um, because I think before you know people were probably trying to fit appointments in in their lunch or you know after the working day and I guess now with people still kind of working from home and some people being on furlough and things like that. I just wonder if people have more time to actually yeah, enjoy do. these treatments. Yeah, they actually have. A, I think everyone's got a lot of time to be fair. And then like, sometimes if I'm running over a little bit, they're like, no, it's fine. I've got nothing else to do. You can take your time. Whereas normally everyone's in the rush. Like, oh, I've got to go here at this time. So what time are we going to finish? Yeah, it's just, it's very interesting, isn't it? I think life was just very, very different back in January, February to how it is now. And I wonder if this is going to kind of permanently change client habits. Um, because, you know, like before, like you said as well, sometimes people would always be looking for kind of a cheap option or they might go for like the quickest treatment option. But I wonder now if the future for mobile nail techs is that clients are always going to go for those more luxury um kind of treatments and whether people will be doing more of like partners because I think that's so interesting what you said about you kind of have the husband and the wife now um which is great for a mobile now tech that's two clients isn't it <laughs> exactly and then I think like next year when it gets um when things do well when things do get better I believe that there'll be a lot of group bookings as well I think that will probably increase also because I just think a lot of um, women and men feel like why go to a nail salon when I can just have them come to my home and to do the nails and then if they've got some friends around whether it's for a Hindu a party anything like mm. that I think that's going to increase especially in the summer and I think because a lot of weddings have been cancelled this year next yes. year there's going to be loads of weddings yeah. and there's going to be loads of bridesmaids who need their nails done <laughs> so mobile nail techs are going to be yeah. very very busy 
I guess now is a good time to think about potentially putting some wedding packages together then and actually trying to target to those people now because yeah you're right so many weddings have been delayed this year but actually there's, pro there's going to so many have been moved to next year that it could be a great another great opportunity for mobile nail pegs. Definitely. I think next year is going to be a very, very busy year for sure. <laughs> I think it is. I think the minute everyone can sort of have parties without worrying about things, there'll be parties everywhere, won't there? <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's going to be socialising to the max. But yeah, I think you're right because I think it's about kind of looking to the future, isn't it? Because you can focus a little bit on the negatives and the kind of doom and gloom, but you're kind of finding the positives in it. Because even though weddings have been cancelled this year, you know there's going to be a lot next year. So this could be a great time to really advertise yourself as somebody who specialises in wedding nails and getting that group booking, like doing the bride, doing the bride's mum, the bridesmaids, like, exactly. yeah. Exactly. There's going to be a lot of that, a lot of hen -dos, a lot of a lot of group stuff next year for sure. Yeah. Well, Roxanne, they were all the questions. I just wanted to let you know that so many people have said it's been an interesting session and have been really agreeing with you about the fact that clients will pay for good quality and will pay to see a tech that makes them feel secure about all the safety procedures being followed and kind of following it to a T. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to really thank you for coming on today. It's been absolutely brilliant. Um, for anybody who's come into this a little bit late, this will indefinitely be on PB's Facebook page. You can always go back and watch it from the start and we will be putting it on our YouTube channel this week as well. Um, but I really do wish you all the best, Roxanne. It sounds like you've got loads going on and it's going to be a really exciting time for the business. And do stay in touch and let us know about anything you're kind of working on. Yes, thank you so, so much for having me. It was wonderful and I'm glad everyone else enjoyed it. So yeah, thank you. yeah. A brilliant Zoom debut <laughs> by you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, do stay in touch. And if anybody does have any extra questions, anybody who's watching this on a playback, if you do put it in the chat box, then we will um, ask you. Roxanne, I don't know if you've got time to just answer one quick question that's come in. Um, just a few people who are watching are wondering how you got into celebrity manicure services, like how you kind of got those clients. Um, so what happened was, it starts off with, I'll cut a very long story short, I'm sorry. <laughs> <'cause> I know <laughs> it's fine. Um, but basically, um, the way I started off was assisting. And I assisted Sophie Robson, who is David Beckham's manicure at the time. Yeah. And I would advise anyone that wants to get into celebrities to assist first. So I assisted her for like Fashion Week in London. I did a lot of shows with her. And then I started doing some test shoots with photographers. And then doing test shoots led to editorials. Then mm -hmm. editorials led to doing celebrities. So a lot of the celebrities that I've done and that I've worked with was through um, word of mouth. So it's basically like networking with people and meeting people and also doing the best you can. Word of mouth is the most powerful thing. So if you do a really good job and um, you never know who you meet or who you talk to and they will basically refer you to them. And then also celebrities are friends with celebrities and then they will tell you, tell them about you as well. And the word just keeps spreading. But my mm -hmm. advice would be to just um, get into the fashion industry. That, that definitely helps to link in into um, doing celebrity clients. Yeah, I guess it's just about getting your foot in the door, isn't it? And I guess now's a good time to contact some of those really big name nail techs who do the shows and do a lot of kind of TV work and stuff and see if they've got any availability for assisting next year. Um, exactly. Because, yeah, I mean, hopefully all these kind of fashion week shows and stuff will start picking up again next year. And it is a, a brilliant way to kind of get your name out there. I mean, we interviewed so many nail techs who have really kind of started their business off through assisting so yeah. I think you really can't underestimate the power of just assisting somebody who's been in the industry a long time yeah and the other thing I'll say is the good thing about assist assisting is that um you basically learn how to become a professional um, session nail tech. So assisting mm -hmm. someone who's professional, you learn from them. Like if you don't get to learn from anyone, you don't really know how to, to be around them. And also with celebrities, they like you to treat them as a normal person and not to be unprofessional or to get excited when you see them and to just <laughs> stay calm, stay humble, stay professional. Mm -hmm. And when you're like that, they like you and they want to work with you more. So it's best to just treat the celebrity as a normal person. Of course I do everyone's nails the best I can, but that will be my advice to those who want to work with celebrities is just treat them the same as everyone mm. else do, do the best you can but just be yourself and don't ask uh, too many questions yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i guess the temptation must be so strong sometimes um depending on who you've got sat in front of you but um 
that was such a brilliant answer and thank you for doing that Roxanne and yeah like I said if anybody else does oh people are saying thank you for that um if anybody else does have any questions do post it in the comment box and what I'll do is I'll keep an eye on it for the next few days and I'll try and get these across to Roxanne to answer and I'll post on Facebook but again thank you so much really thank really you good. thank you so and, much yeah do stay in touch definitely I'll see you later thanks so much Roxanne thank you again. bye, bye.